Good morning. Good morning. A little weighted on this side over here, I see. Well, I also welcome all of those who are following us on Facebook. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it as we worship our risen Savior on the sixth Sunday of Easter with Divine Service Setting 3. You see behind me, we are implementing communion again. So we are going to have communion today, uh, but with some precautions. Um, I'm going to invite on each side one family, so one, pretty much one pew at a time to each side. Don't kneel, though. Just remain standing, and we don't have to wipe down the railing every time. Then, So just please remain standing. If you have to kneel, by all means, kneel. Um, but just remain standing, and then I'll pass the other bread, and then I'll pass you the cup as well. Sanitize my hands in between each time and so forth. Uh, each family, I should say then. Um, so those are some precautions. So yes, please still come up and receive our Lord's body and blood on this day. But please remember those precautions. There should be also hand sanitizer in all the pews as well. If you don't have some, we have more in the uh, sacristy that we can give you too. Um, so please, by all means, use them as necessary. Uh, we are still in the season of Easter, so we'll be, again, singing the gradual between the first and the epistle reading, and then our special Alleluia and verse uh, before the gospel reading. Um, otherwise, everything is all the same that we're going to be sticking with. Uh, there's no distribution hymns at all, um, just because it's just a few of us, so we should be able to get through no problem at all. Um, but... Some of the other hymns we're going to be singing, actually, we sung on Easter. But since no one was in here for Easter, to really sing them out loud, yeah, we could sing them online, we're going to be re-singing some of those hymns again, two of them today, and then two of them next week. Sunday is uh, technically the last Easter uh, Sunday, even though every Sunday really is a celebration of Easter. Next week, Sunday is the last Sunday of Easter season. Uh, so again, we're going to sing some of those um, Easter hymns that we were to sing on Easter so we can all sing them out again with all the joys because Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we begin singing our opening hymn, 465, Now all the vault of heaven resound.
Oh, it's great to hear that great triumphant sound. Even as we always celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we confess our sins, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us his forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our key reading. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This first reading for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 17. 
While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Ephrocorean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him into Areopagus, saying, Maybe know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. And all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I pass along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and the imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And now join in uh, singing our gradual. Epistle for this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience. So that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of our Lord. We rise for a special Alleluia Easter verse and a gospel reading.
Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of our Lord. We now make a confession of our faith with each other and to each other, even for those at home with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dying, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we see as we join in singing our praises to our resurrected Savior with hymn 645, Built on the Rock.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you all this morning from God our Father, our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and our helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lesson for consideration the sixth Sunday of Easter comes from our continuation in the book of Acts. In the name of our risen Savior Jesus Christ, dear people of God, gathered here and online. Alan, how's everything looking? Okay, good. Well, many of you know I am a big country music fan. Actually, growing up, I wasn't too big in the country. It was more in the high school, but thankfully, because that's how Caitlin and I met at a big country music festival in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Five days of camping. We went with some mutual friends. I got to know her. found out she was Lutheran. What are the odds of finding a Lutheran girl in a big country music festival like this? She liked Ford. You know, I'm a big Ford fan. Our family, extended family, had a farm, so it just was meant to be. So a big country, we were both big country music fans, and we're raising up our girls to big country music fans, too. Well, when Carrie Underwood came out on the stage in 2011, joined by Vince Gill to sing How Great Thou Art, and I was really moved by her performance. By the end of the performance, there were tears in her own eyes as she powerfully sang with everything she had, How Great Thou Art. Even the skeptics in the audience stood up and applauded her to the powerful witness that she gave to the greatness of God, the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And maybe, just maybe even that day, some people came away from there believing. And so it was with Apostle Paul, standing in the Areopagus in ancient Athens, surrounded by all these skeptics who had half-hearted beliefs in multiple gods, he gave this powerful witness to the greatness of the one true God. He powerfully proclaimed the truth that this one true God created the world in which we live, this one true God cares about people, and this one true God will judge the world by his son whom he raised from the dead. How could Paul be so bold in his Christian faith? Well, you know the answer to that question. Jesus promised to give his disciples the Holy Spirit And Jesus kept that promise to Paul, and he keeps that promise to all of us as well. We don't have to be afraid to stand up to the skeptics, to the unbelievers, to the enemies, and talk to them about the greatness of our true God. I know inside of us we have this fear, but Peter says we should always be ready to give an answer for the hope that we believe in. So Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Man of Athens! I see that in every way you are very religious. They were objects of worship everywhere in Athens. Statues of gods, altars, shrines to gods. Overlooking the whole city then was the um, Parathenian, the temple to the goddess Athena. And then there was the altar with the inscription to the unknown god. And a historian later said that there were more gods in Athens than there were actually men. Well, these people were very religious, but their religion was a belief in many different gods whom they just didn't take seriously at all. Read the mythology of the Greek gods, and you will find that their gods often interacted with with human beings and with each other in whimsical ways. The stories abounded with gods tricking the other gods. More powerful than the gods were the fates or luck or chances that took place. Earlier, the apostle Paul was greatly distressed to see that the city was just full of all of these idols. He is moved then to stand up and speak about the one true God because he wanted these people to hear about the only way, the true way, to come to forgiveness and peace and hope of everlasting life that can only be found in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Because, hallelujah, he is risen Hallelujah. And that's the way it is when you love people and you want to see them in heaven one day. Though they have their own strange views of God and maybe what they expect of God's expectations. It's hard to imagine a highly intellectual city such as Athens where people offered her little gifts of different shrines and statues and altars throughout the city do it to support their gods and receive help from them. 
But then you travel to places like you know, Silicon Valley, Washington, D.C., Hollywood, and ask what kind of gods the people made for themselves in their minds in these places. Perhaps you've encountered people who have created their own views of God that are so removed from their one true God as you have come to see him revealed in his word. Now, if I've heard people describe God as the man upstairs, I've seen a movie where he is called The Force. Now, he's portrayed as a woman in the movie The Shack. And a woman named Shayla, no one around here, no one I know, but just named Shayla, described her God in this way. I have not gone to church in years, but I have my own little God inside of me, and I call it Shelaism. Another person says, I don't have to worship God in church on Sunday. I get him out in the woods or on the beach. And yes, you run into people who just believe in pure luck, and that's it. People say, oh, I can count on my lucky stars or my lucky horseshoe or my lucky rabbit feet. The one true God the Almighty God, who created everything, is not a God fashioned by hands or created in the minds of people. He is the creator of the whole entire universe of which we cannot even fathom and which we have not even discovered parts of. So if God is this Almighty God, there is no way in our human minds we can stick him in this tiny little box to make him be who we want him to be. So that's why Paul got up and told the, the, told the skeptics in Athens, the God who made the world and everything in it, everything that you see and beyond what you can see, is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples made by hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives life to all men and breath and everything else. And so we sing... O Lord my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. We believe wholeheartedly and whole faithfully that God created the heavens and the earth in six literal 24-hour days and then rested on the seventh day, which we have now here, worshiping him, remembering the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And so we should also look for opportunities to boldly confess in our communities, in our circle of friends, even in our own families. One day as we all get to gather back together again. And how I wish that I could just wake up every morning. And some mornings I just don't want to get up at all. But if I could just wake up every morning and just sing with compassion and viction, how great thou art, O God. But all too often, our sinful human flesh leads us to doubt how great our God really is in providing for all our needs and in working out everything for our good as promised to us, especially when we see everything going on around us and in the world, and in our own country and state. We think, God, how can you be great when all this is going on? And we trust his promises, but then we falter. We think, okay, God, I know you're going to take me through this all, but then you see just things getting worse and worse and worse, and we start to forget about God's promises and who he really is. We find ourselves praying as the man who did, who came to Jesus for help, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Over and over again, our God, the one true God, reminds us that he is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is the one who is in control of all of our lives, our whole being, everything about us. Thank God that I'm not bringing my offerings of not just money, but my time and my talents and everything about me. I'm not just bringing it to some strange God on the streets of Athens or forming my own view of God as I sit at home, especially here in God's country. The one true God is not some God with the name Zeus or Arius or Poseidon or Athena who doesn't really get involved in the lives of the people. The one true God made the first human beings 
He gave them the breath of life. He watches over the lives of people, directing their matters throughout the world. And yes, he allows people to experience disasters and pandemics and even personal illnesses so that they will seek after him. You know, for many of us, our hope is after this pandemic is over is that more people actually start flocking back to churches. Every Sunday, we're getting more and more people back, which is good. And hopefully more people who maybe haven't stepped foot in here will be back again. And we have the great technology use that people can watch at home right now, and even if they can't make it here, they still can watch it at home. So that we can come back and seek after him. Especially today when we get to receive his body and blood to strengthen us, give us comfort, help us persevere through this. Because what does the one true God want for all people? Well, Paul says it. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. It is only in God, the one true God, that we can find life, that we can live in him. He wants people everywhere to find that eternal life that can only be found in Jesus Christ. And in his plan to rescue us in his death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave, as hallelujah, he has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're not ashamed to confess that at all. We're not ashamed to boldly say that. Carrie Underwood was not ashamed to sing the verse. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, <clears throat> sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on my cross, my burden gladly sharing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for he knew it was salvation to everyone who faithfully and truly believed. Our God, our awesome God, has given us the privilege of carrying in our hearts and on our lips and in our whole being these words from Jesus. That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Someone once asked me, do I think if I was the only person in the world that ever sinned, God would still have sent his son to die for me? Well, knowing how great our God is, and how great the love of God is, I believe that God will personally do that just for me. And thankfully and graciously, he has done that for us all, for everybody of all times, of all places. And Paul pleaded with the people of Athens to repent of their sin before it was too late. He told them not to think of God as an object of gold or silver or stone that they made him to be, or made all their gods to be. Because really, such a view of God is just way too small. God puts up with the foolishness of people in their vain adultery, but only for so long, as we've seen throughout all of Scripture. But it wasn't just the people of Athens who needed to repent and change their thoughts about God. It was the people of Corinth and Rome and all the far corners of the world. He wants all people everywhere of all times to repent, to see their sin, to see the wrongdoing they've done, and turn back to God. And feel sorrowful for them. And the people of foreign countries who have more gods than the people of Athens need to repent. The people in their own communities who have their own little God inside of themselves, including even us here, need to repent and need to see the true God before it's too late. As there is a day coming when people will be raised to life again, and they will have to stand before God the Almighty. Justice will be served. But remember, justice isn't served as guilty. Justice can also be served as not guilty, as innocent. As it will be served by someone who died and rose again and welcomed them into the new heaven and the new earth. And that person, the person who's advocating for us, who's standing before the Father for us, is God's own Son, Jesus Christ, who bore the punishment to judge us 
redeemed, saved, forgiven, loved. And I have been privileged to serve as a pastor in ministry for almost five years now. And June, it'll be five years, just like Trinity is just June, we'll be celebrating 85 years. And looking back, yeah, there are times I wish I'd been more like Paul and the early Christians in the way that they witnessed to Jesus as resurrection from the dead. Paul didn't say, oh, the Greeks are going to laugh at me if I tell them about the resurrection of, of Jesus from the dead. No, he didn't do that. He stood up among them and he testified his heart out to them. For the rest of their lives, those skeptics will recall in that day in the Areopagus when a man named Paul told them to repent and turn to the one true God because they would be judged by a man whom God raised from the dead. And just like the rest of my life and all of our lives, who too maybe saw Carrie Underwood perform that performance, as Carrie Underwood witnessed to the judgment to come, when she powerfully sang to the crown as it stood on, her, on its feet, <clears throat> see if I can sing this. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. May we boldly proclaim, boldly proclaim, even now, more than ever, my God, how great thou art. Well, we can do better than that. <laughs> my God, how great thou art. For he is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God our Father guard your hearts and minds in our risen Savior Jesus Christ as he fills you with the Holy Spirit to always boldly proclaim how great our God truly is in raising his Son from the dead to save us for all eternity. Amen. We now rise as we join in the prayers of God's Holy Church. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father for this day, for Faith Lutheran Church of Whitehall, for our nation, those who serve, for those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, and for all conditions and manner of all people. Let us pray to the Lord for the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the one true God. Lord, in your mercy... Let us pray to the Lord for Faith Lutheran Church of Whitehall, its mission and its people, its leaders and its pastor, giving them the ability to meet the needs that arise as they do the work you have given them to do in proclaiming the saving truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray to the Lord for the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of this pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail Life be protected from young to old, and truth abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our let us pray to the Lord for the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the needy and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray to the Lord for the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those who are depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the sick and those who suffer, especially for those named in our bulletin, including the great recovery for Rob Dittenberg after surgery this week, the loved ones mourning the loss of Justin, Matt, and Koff, and those we name in our hearts now. that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head, and that God will grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and comfort in their grief and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray to the Lord for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Jessica Coletta and Randy and Jody Mark, that as they celebrate another year of life from marriage, you continue to watch over them, providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life from marriage to come, if it be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in your love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold, that we may not fear but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood, until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. In peace, oh, the Lord be with you. And with spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places, no matter who we are with, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples, and in their sight was taken up into heaven that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all those in heaven, we long to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Remember us in your eternal kingdom and teach us to boldly always pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, and I, when he's betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he, brought, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always.
come up one, two at a time for each side. I will pray the wafer and the um, cup into each of your hands, so don't wait for any of them. I will place them in your hand. And then uh, I know it's against habit. We're so used to kneeling, but the clock says to stay standing um, for communion. Mm -hmm.
Join in singing the song of Simeon, the nunc dimine. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your one and only Son into our flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament that we get to receive once again. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to boldly proclaim you as one true God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and fill your hearts with his everlasting peace, joy, forgiveness, and love. May be seated as we all join in boldly praising our risen Savior with him 475. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing.
bless the morning to you all on the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, voters uh, gathering are supposed to have tomorrow night. Um, it's canceled. Uh, we've postponed that to June 8th, um, which will happen as long as the uh, order um, expires uh, in two weeks and then uh, nothing else major happens at all. So we're now applying for June 8th for our um, voters gathering that was supposed to happen in April. <laughs> Pretty soon we'll get to July when we're supposed to have another voters meeting. Uh, usually we don't in July, but anywho. So June 8th for voters, uh, some things just look forward to. Now the summers, now we're going to be getting into our summer schedule pretty much. Um, but with that comes this Thursday is our special Ascension worship. So please join us Thursday night, 7 o'clock, as we um, will celebrate and recognize the Ascension of our Savior and what that really truly means to us. His death, resurrection, and he needed to ascend so it could be with us for all times and all places. So that's Thursday night, 7 o'clock. We're going to try live streaming again. Uh, more than likely, Alan will be here, so i got to set everything up. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so we'll try streaming it as well if you can't make it or want to watch it online. We're still planning a rummage sale. The order is supposed to be done, this, uh, I believe, that Thursday before a rummage sale. So we're still planning that. So again, if you have stuff or this time you're home or cleaning, Call the church. I uh, will schedule a time to drop it off, or um, or if you want to, it, we're storing all of our stuff in the shed over here, right over here where the tractor and trailers park. Uh, you can just set it in there, and then um, as we get closer, we'll plan times to I guess set up hopefully. Um, but so that's still going to play take place uh, May 29th, 30th, and then June 1st. And also June 1st, we're having a blood drive here. Yes, we're going to have two events going on in one day. Hopefully it should work out. If people are here, then they can browse through our rummage sale. Um, so work out for benefit. And there too, you know, please come if you can donate blood. They're in critical need again here in the UP of blood. Um, so that's going to take place right here at Trinity again on all on June 1st. Our graduation recognition is supposed to be taking place next week Sunday. We are postponing till June 28th, the last Sunday in June. Because um, we want to do a special again recognition fellowship for them downstairs and with the order and you know, try and still be safe for people. We don't want to try to squeeze that in too early next week. So again, that's going to be June 28th. We have five graduates from here graduating this year. So especially we want to send them with God's blessings as they go out into this world and everything that's going on. And then again, have a nice, and that's also going to be our potluck Sunday too. So we'll get back in the potluck again, enjoying all the delicious food and goodies that people bake. So again, that's going to be June 28th. So still no fellowship hour yet. Uh, but one day, we'll get back to it when we can um, start tasting all the delicious desserts again. <laughs> but no matter what, may God continue to be with you all and guide you and everyone at home watching as well. As you go in peace, as alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.